हॅलो फ्रेंड्स आय एम मिस प्रीती बावनकुडे असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजिनिअरिंग डिपार्टमेंट जी एच रायसोनी इन्स्टिट्यूट ऑफ इंजिनिअरिंग अँड टेक्नॉलॉजी नागपूर टुडे आय डिलिव्हर अ लेक्चर ऑन सिलेक्शन ऑफ मोटर फॉर द ड्राईव्ह लास्ट टाईम आय कवर्ड द पार्ट दॅट इज इंट्रोडक्शन ऑन द इलेक्ट्रिकल ड्राईव्ह अँड देअर कंट्रोल ऑल्सो आय आय वॉज एक्सप्लेन द ट्रान्झियन स्टॅबिलिटी स्टेडिसेस स्टॅबिलिटी ऑल्सो क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द ड्राईव्ह सो टुडेज लेक्च माय टुडेज लेक्चर कंटेंट इज सिलेक्शन ऑफ मोटर नेक्स्ट इज आर एम एस हॉस पॉवर रेटिंग ऑफ मोटर थर्ड इज लोड इक्विलायझेशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आय स्टार्ट विथ द सिलेक्शन ऑफ मोटर द सिलेक्शन ऑफ मोटर इज व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट ॲज पर द ड्राईव्ह सिस्टम बिकॉज if you choose the correct rating of motor then the drives is operated very well if you are selecting the motor is uh, your selection is wrong at that time the total drive system will collapse or sometime devices which is connected in the drive it will damage so selection of motor is very important part first of all some parameter are consider while selection of motor first that is a selection of motor governing some parameters first parameter is that nature of that nature of supply nature of supply that it may be a ac supply it may be a dc supply so depends on that we can select the motor so first is nature of supply that is a part is a, suppose ac supply ac supply or b is a dc supply so based on that we can select our motor so this is a one of the part by selection of the motor next we are considering that nature of nature of drive so nature of drive it may be a group drive it may be a individual drive it may be a multi motor drive so on the basis of the drives first is group drive group drive second multi motor or third is individual drive so this is also one important parameter by selection of the motor third one is that electrical characteristics electrical characteristic see in electrical characteristics we are study the braking starting characteristics running characteristics also speed control characteristics in electrical characteristics first is that starting b speed control d braking so in electrical characteristic first is starting characteristic in some of the application in electrical drives required us high starting torque sometime required the low starting torque 
so starting characteristic is also important while selection of the motor similarly running characteristics speed control characteristics braking control system yeah braking control also important so this is some parameters similarly next is four <coughs> mechanical characteristics see in mechanical characteristic first is type of encloser second transmission transmission of drive see noise so these are the mechanical characteristics type of uh, type of enclosure so first of all enclosure means what so total enclosure means machine or motor is designed in such a way that you have to prevent or you have to uh, moisture will not enter into the machine so in this type of enclosure it may be a total in uh, total enclosure semi enclosure or you can say that uh, flame uh, type of enclosure means total enclosure flame proof means sometime if you uh, in case of burning uh, that motor will not damage if the the enclosure is flame enclosure enclosure transmission of drives v bell drive rope drive so this is a transmission of drive also this is a one important parameter that is a noise so noise in case are in domestic applications in hospitals also if the machine having uh, so much noise creating a so much noise in that case ambient of the at ambient of the hospital will not good so noise of the motor will preferred is less uh, means those machines having noise is less that will be preferred for the domestic applications also uh, for the hospitals also so noise will be or uh, is not greater than the 70 db so this is one of the important parameter for selection of the motor we can choose a motor in this way that that motor will not create more noise so this is a one important parameter similarly fifth that is cost see some motor having the capital cost is high sometime um, that motor capital cost is high but running cost is low but in case of one we can choose one motor which having a uh, capital cost is less but running cost is high because efficiency of that motor is very uh, less also maintenance cost is high so causes of the maintenance that means uh, causes of the running cost is high is that maintenance cost is that uh, high so because of that the cost of the machine is so this is also we can prefer in such way that machine in such way that to running cost is low so this is a one important parameter while selection of the motor also this is a six point the rating of motor rating of in the rating of motor uh, first is a continuous type of rating the second one is intermittent and lastly it is a peak load type of road, uh, rating so first is continuous 
second is intermittent third is peak load so this is a rating of motor i will explain some examples of the electrical drive that is first is crane some examples examples of drive for example first is crane and hoist c basically crane or it is used for the lifting the heavy mass also uh, placing the heavy mass from one place to another place in that condition we required a um, those machine which having the those machine which having the uh, constructionally strong so in crane constructionally strong machine is required also in crane and hoist we required high starting torque so we can select a machine in such a way that those machine having the high starting torque that machine we choose for the crane and hoist so dc series motor is having a high starting torque so for the crane and hoist we select we select the dc series motor so in hoist we can dc series motor one the one of the characteristic of dc series motor that is it can run only when applying some load at no load condition it having very dangerous speed so whenever we are running the dc series motor you are applying some load then it will run normally otherwise or at no load condition dc series motor at no load condition dc series motor uh, speed is very high so that is your crane and hoist example similarly similarly printing similarly for printing we can use the dc compound motor dc compound motor so these are the some these are the some examples uh, for the drives third one is grinding grinding and grinding 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 means what crushing the metals into the small particles crushing the metal sheet into the small particles that is a grinding for that process low starting torque is required so we can select a machine in uh, such way that those machine having the low starting torque that machine is good for the grinding so dc shunt motor dc shunt motor dc shunt motor also the dc shunt motor having a characteristic of constant speed which is required for the grinding of the uh, grinding machine which is used or which is required requirement of the grinding machine so these are the examples of your driving next so that is your all the selection uh, all the parameter we are consider while selection of the motor next is that third uh, second part is r m s r m s 
हॉर्स पावर रेटिंग ऑफ मोटर रेटिंग ऑफ मोटर सी इन मेनी एप्लीकेशंस आर इन इंडस्ट्रियल ड्राइव फॉर एग्जाम्पल रोलिंग मिल्स इलेक्ट्रिक शॉवर्स हॉइस्ट लिफ्टिंग इन दैट केस एज द लोड चेंजेस आर एज द लोड चेंजेस द रेटिंग ऑफ मशीन इज विल चेंज सो वी कैन सिलेक्ट अ मशीन रेटिंग ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द लोड दैट आई विल एक्सप्लेन बाई यूजिंग सम ग्राफ सी that on x uh, on x axis that is a time and on y axis that is horsepower rating hp rating this is a time on x axis and on y axis hp rating see in some applications the motor which is continuously are rising uniformly for a fixed period of time for example see that machine is continuously rising for a fixed period of time suppose this is up to the 200 this is up to the 200 hp after that time after that time that will be a constant for some other period that will be a constant for other fixed period suppose this is a 100 100 hp this is a time suppose this is a 10 minutes this is a 20 minutes for another next time it may be a no load it may be a no load period so this is supposed to 24 after this 24 minutes the complete cycle is repeating the after 24 minutes that complete cycle will be repeated so see this is a 200 hp after then no load period this one is a no load period so this is one cycle one cycle one cycle so we can calculate the rating of the motor on the basis of rms horsepower rating so we can derive the formula for the rms horsepower rating that is rms rms rating of rms rating of motor equals to under root it is a root mean square so under root of it is a under root of 1 upon time for one cycle this is time for one cycle into integration of hp whole square into dt fine so this is a formula for finding the rms rating of the motor you can write this formula in this way also that is summation of hp whole square into time t t it indicates the time upon time for 
वन साइकिल सो दिस इज दिस गिव्स द रेटिंग ऑफ मोटर रेटिंग ऑफ मोटर दैट इज एच पी इन एच पी तो बाई यूजिंग दिस फॉर्मूला वी कैन कैलकुलेट द रेटिंग ऑफ योर मशीन कंटिन्यू पार्ट वी विल स्टडी इन नेक्स्ट पार्ट दैट आई विल डिस्कस सम नुमरिकल बेस्ड ऑन दिस फॉर्मूला सो नुमरिकल बेस्ड ऑन द आर एम एस रेटिंग ऑफ मोटर सो दैट नुमरिकल इज नुमरिकल सी वन मोटर परफॉर्मिंग सम ड्यूटी साइकल सम मोटर परफॉर्मिंग सम ड्यूटी आई डायरेक्टली टेक डाउन द लोड एंड टाइम सो वन मोटर परफॉर्मिंग सम ड्यूटी साइकल दैट सपोज हंड्रेड एच पी फॉर हंड्रेड एच पी फॉर टेन मिनिट्स टेन मिनिट्स नो लोड पीरियड एट नो लोड no load for 5 no load for 5 minutes next 60 hp for 8 minutes these all these loads are constantly constant load next is next no load next no load for four minutes after then that cycle is repeatedly and question is that calculate or estimate the rating of motor that is calculate calculate the rating of motor <coughs> see how to calculate for the continuous period for continuous rating of motor for continuous rating of motor continuous rating of motor see so this is a given data that is 100 hp for 10 minutes no load for 5 minutes 60 hp for 8 minutes and no load for 4 minutes from that given data we can draw the graph see the solution solution see directly i draw the graph from the given data Hundred HP. So directly that hundred HP for ten minutes. This is suppose ten minutes. Hundred ten minutes. This is the axis of time axis. This is a HP horsepower. So for a period of ten uh, minutes, that is hundred HP. For next no load means zero. There is. no load for 5 minutes so next 5 minutes means it is a 15 or you can write there period 10 minutes 10 minutes next that is 5 minutes 5 minutes that is no load period first is a 100 hp that is for 10 minutes then no load periods for 5 minutes next is 60 hp 
60 HP. 60 HP. For next eight minutes, see. This is for eight minutes. So maybe this one is a twenty-three because fifteen plus eight that is a twenty-three. So at the twenty-three, but it is for the duration of this sixty HP. This is a hundred HP. This is a sixty HP for eight minutes. Next one is no load for four minutes. This is a no load for next four minutes. Four minutes. After this, after this, the same cycle will repeated. After this, the same cycle will be repeated. So this is a one duty cycle. One cycle. is a complete one cycle so you can directly write down the complete one cycle time that is 10 plus 5 15 23 23 plus 4 so it is a 27 so total time is a 27 minutes in minutes that time is in minutes see we having a, some formula for rms rms horse power that is power horse power rating c c horse power rating formula that is summation sorry for c is a square root square root then summation of hp whole square into time upon the time of time of one cycle one cycle see here we can find the rating of the motor so under root of under root of first period i consider the first period that is 10 minutes 100 hp hp square means 100 square for what period for the Ten minutes. So multiply that ten. This is your HP square into time. So hundred square into the ten minutes plus next. Next that is zero HP. This is a no load period for five minutes. So this is one is a um, zero square. So zero multiply with anything that is five. So no use of that. Next is sixty HP. That is sixty whole square into for the what period? Sixty is for eight minutes plus. Next thing is no load period. Once again, that is zero. So no use of that. Upon Total, total time for one cycle that is twenty-seven, ten, fifteen, fifteen plus eight, twenty-three, twenty-three plus four that is twenty-seven. So that is twenty-seven. So you can calculate that nearly sixty-nine point something. So you can choose your motor because sixty-nine point zero seven, maybe zero seven. It may be nearly the zero seven. The sixty nine point zero seven. We can choose the sixty nine point zero seven. It is not available in the market, so we can choose the seventy HP of your motor. Seventy HP motor. So that you have to calculate the HP that is rating of your 
motor by using this formula. So, here the second part that is RMS horsepower rating of the motor you have to calculate by some giving some example also. Next part that is load equalization. Today I that is load equalization. See in industrial applications load are very fluctuate in wide range because in uh, many machines sometime load torque is very high during that condition the voltage uh, voltage drop across yeah, if a voltage drop uh, supply side voltage drop at supply side is high due to that condition load is very fluctuating vo voltage drop heavy current will exist from the supply side and because of that and because of that the devices will damage so if the load torque is high if the load torque is high then voltage drop at voltage drop at supply side because of that voltage drop fluctuation is occurs fluctuation is occurs fluctuation is occurs so to reduce that fluctuation to reduce the fluctuation some mechanism is required so the smoothing process of the fluctuation or to reduce the fluctuation that is called as the equalization so equalization means it is a process it is a process equalization means equalization means it is a process for smoothing the fluctuation in the motor or fluctuation in the drive system so how can you reduce the equal uh, how can you reduce the fluctuation in the system we can attach any mass we can attach flywheel also we can attach a flywheel on the rotor shaft then fluctuation will reduce but how it is possible because flywheel will absorb some energy at some lo load it will deliver some energy at another load so one by one i explain you see <coughs> during light load condition during light load condition light load lightly loaded or low load condition during light load condition during light load condition that flywheel will absorb some energy because in during light load condition the flywheel will absorb some energy absorb some energy absorb energy and during peak load time or peak load condition or very high load time during peak load peak load condition that flywheel will release some energy because see when load torque is very high in that case the heavy current will uh, drawn from the supply in that condition some uh, heavy current drawn from the supply in that condition voltage drop uh, voltage drop at source side and because of that excess amount of energy is drawn from the supply so during peak load condition if flywheel will attach to the rotor shaft the, that 
energy will release release energy by the flywheel so during peak load condition that flywheel will supply some energy and some energy from the source so in that case we can equalize the your equalize the system so that is your load equalization means if the flywheel will attach to the rotor shaft so during peak load condition that flywheel will release some energy that flywheel will release some energy and giving to the motor so in this way that load will not fluctuate so we can reduce the fluctuation that is your aim that is load equalization because equalization means what smoothing the fluctuation or smoothing your peak load condition so that is your flywheel so i also explain by you some graphical representation also see that is <coughs> this axis is a time axis this is torque torque this t max this is a t minimum t minimum again t max t minimum see this torque is a low torque so you can mention that tl tl in suffix l you can write uh, in l so that is tl max tl minimum when motor torque is greater than low torque in that condition acceleration is occurs it means speed is increasing but see in the condition of load torque is greater than motor torque if the load torque is greater than motor torque the deacceleration is occurs means deacceleration that is a deacceleration deacceleration means i studied in uh, i studied in last lecture that is deacceleration means speed speed decreases speed decreases see if i draw some line of motor torque see this is your motor torque motor torque see here that motor torque is less than the load torque here this one is a motor torque is less than the motor torque is less than the load torque during that condition deacceleration means speed speed is decreases sorry this one is a decreases decreases means that speed will decrease that speed will decrease next if the motor torque here i write motor torque is greater than load torque in that condition acceleration is occurs acceleration it means speed is speed is increases speed is increases speed increases means in that period speed will increase so <coughs> this in this line indicates the motor torque and this line indicates the speed of the motor speed of the motor speed of motor so in this way we can also uh, we can also understand the load equalization this period torque is uh, torque uh, during this period torque peak torque and speed will 
decreases speed width decreases when flywheel width attached to the motor shaft then smoothly or we can say that fluctuation will be reduced and load equalization is um, load equalization will be done uh, by using the flywheel next thing so in this way we can study the load equalization means for the load equalization uh, most of the we can use the flywheel in next part we will discuss about the braking characteristic of motors so thank you